Chicken Stock Taking Review and Evaluation. This is one of the best ways to continue to improve the electoral process. As I said on several occasions since we commenced the review meetings three weeks ago, the Commission welcomes diverse opinions about the election insofar as their purpose is to improve the future conduct of elections and to consolidate our democracy. Since the 2019 general election, we have worked together with the National Assembly, civil society organizations, and other stakeholders for the progressive improvement of the electoral process. We were meticulous in our preparations for the election, and there have been many positive developments in this regard. One area is the repeal and reenactment of the Electoral Act 2010 into the Electoral Act 2022. The new law provides for a period of 180 days for political parties to conclude their primaries and submit the names of candidates for the 2023 general election. This enabled the Commission to commence the process of producing the sensitive materials for the election in good time. I am glad to report that the printing of all sensitive and non-sensitive materials for the 2023 general election was entirely done in Nigeria. Not a single ballot paper or result sheet was printed outside the country. This is the first time in 44 years since the transition to democratic rule in 1979 that this great step was taken and achieved in spite of the record number of 93.4 million registered voters and over 500 million ballot papers, result sheets, and other documents for the five categories of the main election and supplementary polls. For this reason, the 2023 general election was held as scheduled for the first time in the last four electoral cycles without a postponement arising from the non-arrival of materials. Furthermore, we are able to expand voter access to polling units for the first time since the initial delimitation exercise in 1996. Similarly, we introduced many technology-based innovations, including the online pre-registration of voters, the fiscal registration using the INEC voter enrollment device, the IVED, the various portals for the nomination of candidates, party agents, and the accreditation of observers and the media. We also collected and published data on the distribution of voters, not only by age and occupation, but also by disability. Within the limits of available resources, we also tried to provide such inclusivity materials as braille jackets and magnifying glasses for some categories of voters with disabilities. Nevertheless, as we are aware, there are many challenges encountered before and during the elections. The severe cash and fall situations were compounded by the perennial insecurity nationwide. Their impact on our deployment plans, compounded by the behavior of some of our own officials in the field, made logistics management particularly challenging. The deployment of thugs by some political actors made election day administration difficult in a number of places. While voter accreditation using the bimodal voter accreditation system was very successful, the uploading of results to the INEC result viewing portal, the IREB, especially for the presidential election, encountered a glitch as explained in our statement on the 26th of February, 26th of February 2023. The Commission is aware that this matter is currently the subject of litigation and will reserve its comments for now. Nevertheless, the performance of the technology deployed for the election is part of the ongoing review of the 2023 general election. It will form an integral part of the comprehensive report that will serve as a basis for further engagement with stakeholders, focusing on specific actions 
necessary for the improvement of future elections and electoral activities in Nigeria. On this note, it is appropriate for the Commission to express its appreciation to civil society organizations and development partners for their enormous support to the Commission during the 2023 general election. This came in the form of technical advice, civic and voter education, organization of meetings and capacity building workshops, as well as the publication of documents. However, it is necessary to seize this opportunity to correct the impression in some sections of the public that the Commission received huge sums of money from development partners for the election. On the contrary, and for the avoidance of doubt, the Commission did not receive any direct funding or cash support from international development partners. Rather, their support was totally indirect through civil society organizations and implementing partners working on elections. Indeed, it has been a long-standing policy of the present commission not to receive direct funding and cash transfers from sources other than the federal government of Nigeria. We hope that we shall continue to have this type of productive partnership with civil society organizations and development partners in the future. It is in furtherance of this partnership that the commission accredits observers because the feedback we receive and their actionable recommendations have been very helpful in the electoral process. For the 2023 general election, the commission received 538 requests, 504 domestic and 34 foreign for accreditation as observers. After a thorough evaluation of the requests, only 228 groups 109 domestic and 38 foreign met the requirements for accreditation. However, so far, only 67 observer groups, 62 domestic and 5 foreign have submitted their observation reports, which represents just about 30% of the accredited, accredited groups for the election. We urge all observer groups that are yet to submit their reports to do so in earnest. In addition to the review of the last general election, the Commission would like to share with you at this meeting the plans for the upcoming by-elections and preparations for the off-cycle governorship elections in Bielsa, Imo, and Kogi states, scheduled for Saturday 11th November 2023. Once again, it is my pleasure to welcome you all to this meeting and we look forward to our robust engagement. I thank Technology played a great role in the 2023 election. We also acknowledge that some of the lapses that we saw in the 2023 election were also because of technology. And most importantly, uh, sir, that in your speech, you indicted and recognized the role of some INEX staff that they played in undermining this election. That is a very welcome development. We're looking forward to the prosecution of these INEX staff that have been indicted. We also um, acknowledge the fact that we know that the former or the suspended resident electoral commissioner of Adamawa State is right now under prosecution. We acknowledge these very positive steps and we wish that the, cons the, the Commission will see this um, to an end. In preparing for the 2023 election, I want to also use this opportunity to commend my colleagues, civil society, for the role that they played in working with INEC and other stakeholders and the turnout of the election that we had. We're hoping that this meeting will be a meeting where we all have the opportunity to speak very objectively to the issues and return that feedback from INEC. I know, sir, that in your statement, you had mentioned that the issue of the of IREB, well, you know that it's still in court, and it's something that you want to suspend uh, comments on. But within, within the purview 
of what will not be indicated in the in the courts, we hope that you can throw more light to us on why the IREF didn't really work the way it was supposed to work in the presidential uh, in the presidential election. And also to note that out of 228 observer groups, this is um, not very good for us from civil society. Only 67 observer groups have sent in their reports. I will encourage my colleagues that we try as much as possible. The effort that we put into applying for accreditation, we should also make that effort to ensure that we send in our reports. Because over the years, I have noticed that the recommendations that we put into our reports are taken on by INEC. And this has brought about some of the reforms we have seen in our electoral, in our electoral process. So 30% out of 228 observer groups that have, not submit, that have submitted their report, it's not a good outing for civil society. If 228 civil society observer groups were accredited for the election, and so many months after the elections, we are yet to submit our report. It's not a good outing for us. So I would really encourage us, in light of the uh, collaboration with INEC, to send in our reports. Finally, sir, we also acknowledge the role that the political class have continuously played in undermining our electoral processes. And we hope that someday we can have a meeting I need politi political class in the room and civil society in the room searching out all of these things. We commend the uh, 2023 election for the technological innovations and like I said earlier, sir, I want to also insist or reiterate the fact that we need, we truly need to know what happened with IREV for the presidential election without really uh, going into what is already in the court. Once more, we look forward to a very um, uh, robust conversation at this meeting, and we hope that, as usual, in your, in your manner, you would be responsive to some of the questions that we have to put on the table.